So YouTube, team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and we got a whole lot to talk about today. Uh, so let's just jump straight into it. Well, before we do that, um, this look right now, because me and Pookie, we went on a super long walk and we did 8,664 steps. Don't know how many miles that is, but we went for a while. Uh, so I was hot. She was hot. But let's do this. Anyway, um, Trace McSorley. Harbaugh said that Trace McSorley is going to be out for a couple of weeks due to a back injury. He said it's more than back spasms. You know what? In fact, let's just read Jeff Zrebik's tweet word for word to see what Harbaugh said. Uh, he said that Trace McSorley wrenched his back Saturday, picking up a box at home. Now, is, does this box have an IR stash in there? Or Anyway, he injured his back, or he wrenched his back picking up a box at home. He played through it, but got it checked further and learned that there was an issue beyond back spasms. So, Trace McSorley is going to be out for a few weeks, and Tyler Huntley, you, that's your QB too. It's, it's all but official now. All but official. Um, like, they, they did sign uh, Kenja Bahar, and I didn't even know he was from, he was from over there. Because I know my boy JB Smooth, with some other people, they saying they play peewee football with him, so they know he's from the crib, they know his family and stuff. I'm like, okay, I ain't know that. So, let me do some more research on uh, Kenji. To see what's up with him. But somebody told me today, they said, Kenji, he's like that, man. He's like that. So Ravens, um, they should be in good shape. Uh, and Harbaugh said that he's going to get to play too. So I would expect, we, when we play the Panthers on Saturday for this preseason game, I would expect Lamar Jackson to play and Tyler Huntley uh, and Kenji Baha as well. Um, now, with Lamar, I only think he's going to play like two drives, maybe. It ain't going to be nothing crazy. But I think he definitely will play uh, this Saturday. Uh, anyway, Ben Cleveland, who I know when we were streaming on Saturday night, somebody was asking, where is Ben Cleveland? When is he getting in the game? And I was like, I don't know. Um, but it appears that Ben Cleveland, he has a or has a concussion. Um, so with concussions, they can be quick in and out, boom. Or with concussions, they can linger. And so hopefully with Ben Cleveland, it's not an ongoing thing. And it's just real quick and he can be good to go. Uh, you don't want to rush him back, of course. Because that's a head injury. You don't want to rush him back. But you hope that that can get cleared up uh, ASAP. Now, with practice today, um, did have a little scare towards the end. Uh, because they said that both Sammy Watkins and Brandon Stevens, they left practice early. Uh, I know they said Sammy Watkins left with a trainer. With Brandon Stevens, I don't remember if they said he did or not. Now, um, Harbaugh said that it ain't anything serious. It shouldn't be anything serious, but again, with Harbaugh, again, with Rashad Bateman, <laughs> hey, he should be back by September. Uh, I, I, I still don't think that's happening. So again, like, like I've said for years, um, I know Harbaugh has improved when he speaks about injuries. He's improved so much, and, and like I said, he's learned so much from the Bashar Perryman situation. But um, seeing is believing. So until we see Rashad Bateman back out there, it's like, okay, until we see Sammy Watkins back out there and until we see Brandon Stevens out there, that's when I believe, okay, it's not, it's not serious, but uh, we'll just see how it goes. Hoping for the best. Um, speaking of injuries, Hollywood, who I, I was really thinking, especially after seeing him uh, catch passes and throw passes to Lamar on Saturday night before the game, I was really thinking we were going to get that announcement today that, oh, Hollywood Brown has returned to practice. I thought today was the day, but not yet. Uh, but they did say that he was uh, he was running on another field opposite the practice field. So he's out, he's been out there running and stuff. But good news too, uh, Deion Kane and Miles Boykin they were doing the same thing as well. So we're getting there. We're getting close to where them boys are back. We're getting really close. They're all getting really really close because the fact that they're out there that says a lot. Hollywood's been out there for the past couple of days, but. We haven't heard anything about Miles Boykin or Deion Kane uh, being out there. So that is uh, great news. Um, now, by Tuesday, so by tomorrow, so I'm probably going to end up seeing y'all later on today. Um, but by tomorrow, by 4 p.m., the Ravens have to cut uh, five players in total. They've cut two. Well, they have to, no, no, no. They have to get their roster down to 85. Now, this morning, they cut uh, Devontae Harris and Aaron uh, Adoye. 
um, who both did play in the preseason. And I know Devontae Harris had a tackle. I think Adoye had a tackle too. So they both made some plays in the preseason. But um, so they, they got rid of those two today. They waived both of those two guys today. So that put their roster at 88 from 90. But they signed uh, Kenji Baha. So that will put them back at 89. So now, if my math is correct, they have to make four more moves because they took away two people, but they added one person. So now you have to make four more moves. So could Trace McSorley be put on IR? Maybe. If he's put on IR right now, his season is over. There would be no coming back from it at all if he's put on IR right now. Because the only way that he would be able to possibly make the team um, is if they kept him on the roster. If they kept his spot on the active roster, and then once they um, they could either put him, uh, they could release him from the regular roster before the 53 man, then sign him back to the practice squad, uh, or that, that would be it, really. Or they just kept him on the active roster. But they're not going to keep an injured QB3 uh, on the active roster. They, they just simply can't do that. The spots are way too valuable to keep a, a third quarterback on the roster that's hurt. So I wonder if Trace is going to be that first injury reserve guy, man. So we'll see. Well, actually second because they already put somebody on injury reserve. Uh, so TikTok. Um, oh, they also had a presser today. This morning has been so busy and it's only 12.06. Uh, but they had a presser today. The presser featured Devin Duvernay. James Proche, uh, Adafe Owe. So all the, all the A's, all the A's on the team, man. Um, and it was nice uh, hearing from all of them. Um, Devin DuVernay, uh, he was very, uh, very happy. He was very upbeat. And, and that's good because he came off of a, uh, a good preseason game. Had a couple of nice catches, had some nice contested catches. Uh, they talked about, he talked about what he wants to improve on uh, moving forward this season. Uh, he said he just really wants to improve on his route running. Um, he said he wants to improve on that. He said his one-hander is better than James Prochet's. Uh, so just a little bit of friendly trash talk. Uh, but he said James Prochet, that's his best friend. He said that's his best friend on the team. Uh, that's his favorite teammate. Um, they came in together. Uh, and he said they get to work together. They get to make mistakes together uh, and just go through the entire process. Uh, so we're really looking forward to uh, Devin DuVernay um, this season. Um, next up was James Prochet. Uh, he spoke. He spoke a lot. He spoke a little bit longer than Devin DuVernay. Um, and he just talked about. Uh, I think somebody asked him about because he only had he only had one catch last year and like two or three targets. So it was he was he made a minimal impact in the passing game. Um, but somebody talked to, to him about that. They asked him how he felt about that, and he said everybody's script isn't the same. Everybody's script isn't the same. Everybody's journey is not going to go the exact same way, and that's true. That's very true. Um, everybody doesn't get their opportunity at the same time. It's a process. You just got to wait. So he said that he goes to sleep early. He said he, he's in bed by 9.30, uh, sleep by 10. Uh, and that's why he's always the first guy out there. And that's, that's great. Especially, I, I thought he was a fifth round pick, but he's actually a sixth round pick. But that says a lot about his work ethic, uh, especially being a, a, lower dra a lower draft selection. Um, and in and, and a time when Ravens, they did so much um, at the receiver position. Uh, so there's a lot of pressure on him just to even make the team. But the fact that he's really been showing out in training camp. Uh, and I know a lot of people said that he was open a lot more uh, than opportunities he got on Saturday night. Because I think he only had like one catch on Saturday night. But a lot of people saying he was wide open a lot of times. The QBs just didn't see him. Um, so for him to have been showing out and for him to have been doing as good as he's been doing. That's really, really good. Uh, so shout out to James Prochet. Um, he talked about how he's just blessed and honored, privileged to be able to play football for money. Like to, to do something that you grew up doing and, and to get paid for it, to do something that you enjoy and get paid for it. That's that's a blessing for sure, man. Uh, so shout out to James Prochet. It was very nice to hear uh, hear him speak because we don't get to hear James Prochet really speak. We don't get to hear du Duvernay speak either. You don't really get to hear either one of them speak much. So um, this was uh, it was really nice. Um, and with James Prochet, now there was a little moment where he uh, he said that he had always wanted to work with uh, with Keith Williams. He said he wanted to work with him in high school, and he said, but he just in college he didn't have any money. It wasn't like he could fly to wherever Keith Williams was at and go work with him because he ain't had no bread. 
Um, but he said when um when the Ravens brought on uh Keith Williams, he he was like, Oh wow. And that's the team keep it clean, Virgil, because James Prochet, he let one fly. So, Ravens, y'all need to talk to James Prochet. Y'all need to talk to Deshaun Elliott, because uh, they definitely wasn't keeping it clean at that press. <laughs> but um, I'm joking. Relax. I know some somebody in the comments last time was like, oh, rah, rah. relax. But they still ain't keep it clean. But anyway, um, but yeah, he just, you could tell that he genuinely appreciates the game of football. He genuinely appreciates it. And I loved it. Loved it. I, I really appreciate, and then we talked about it before, I really appreciate these Ravens presses because, again, I don't know if other teams do it like this. Ravens do these every day after practice. Every day. Every day. And it gives you a chance to really get to know the coaching staff better. It gives you a chance to know the players better. It gives you a chance to really see them in a different light because we're so used to seeing them on Sundays, on game day and stuff. So we see them then. But when you get to hear them speak and hear them express themselves and whatnot, that's nice. Uh, somebody else who spoke was Adafe Away. Now, I was in the Ravens live stream on YouTube um, and somebody mentioned, they were like, oh, Dafe away, he, he doesn't have any energy. He doesn't, he doesn't have any energy. And I was thinking like, what? Just because somebody speaks, they speak softly, they speak calmly, it doesn't mean that they don't have energy. I mean, you saw Saturday night. You saw Saturday night. He, all his energy, he puts it on the field. He ain't got to come out to the presser yelling and screaming and all that. He ain't got to do all that. I mean, we saw on the night that he got drafted. Y'all remember the presser, the night he got drafted, He's talking to the Ravens calmly. It's like he ain't even get drafted. He'll just post it up. Just sitting there calmly. Sitting there talking. Yes, yes, yes. I just got drafted. Yeah, I'm a first round pick. I'm excited to go to the Baltimore Ravens. Just like that. Just like that. But in the background, you hear his family screaming. They yelling. They jumping. They celebrating. They going crazy. You hear all that in the background. But he's cool, calm, collective. Just sitting there. So that appears to be his demeanor. So no matter what, that, that seems like that's what it is. So, and that's, that's big because, and not that there's anything wrong with the rah-rah guys, um, but you got to have somebody that is calm in all situations. No matter if you're winning big, no matter if you're losing big, no matter what the situation, somebody that's calm through everything, they will keep you level-headed no matter what. So it creates good balance for your team. Now, he talked about uh, being a gunner. He said that wasn't really something he was used to doing, but he liked it. He said he was hoping that the punt returner was going to try to run with the ball. Cause, I mean, but you got these two big giants running at you. One, what, 6'5", Adafi away, one six four, Chris Westry coming at you. Yeah, I probably wouldn't even fight fair Carter. I probably would have waved at it. I probably would have waved back to the ball. You know how they wave fair catch? No, I would have waved back to the ball and ran away. Nope. Mm -mm. Y'all, you, you think y'all about to hit me while I'm looking up at it? No. Nope. Mm -mm. Bye. See ya. See ya. And that would have been a wrap. Um, so, and he also talked about uh, Justin Houston. What Justin Houston's been showing him. He said, um, Justin Houston is like Yoda. He said, because it's like this dude knows everything. So he gets to take in so much uh, from him. And that's a, a, a beautiful thing. So it's, um, I'm just, I'm, I'm super excited for Adafi away, man. He, uh, Everything that they've been saying like we because we hear about these training camp guys we, we hear about them and we get excited even though it's training camp But we hear about them we're like oh, okay, let's go and then you're like oh, but at the same time Let's temper expectation. Let's see it in a real game But it not fair way <laughs> we saw it in a real game in the preseason game so It's just it's exciting to think about what this guy can be capable of especially when he has everybody else out there with him too like, think about that. Like, this guy, how he looked then was nice, but imagine cause there was no Calais Campbell. There was no Derek Wolf. There was no Pernell McPhee. And uh, uh, some of the other times when he was making plays, a lot of the other starters weren't out there either. So it's, it's super exciting to think about the possibilities of this team, of this defense especially right now, man. Now, with the offense, we haven't even got to see half of the guys on offense because everybody been out with an injury. Um, but it's... So we'll see how it comes along, but I'm sure it'll be fine. It'll be just fine. I know a lot of people worried about it. They worried about the offensive line and Ronnie Stanley. Ronnie Stanley. Speaking of the offensive line, Ronnie Stanley had his longest practice today. Kevin Zeitler came back, so that was huge. Uh, with Bradley Bozeman, I don't think, I'm not sure if they provided an update on him yet, but he's obviously not back, so we'll see what happens with him. 
So that's something to keep an eye on. So, okay, Bradley Bozeman out, Tristan Colon Castillo, you're up. Or Patrick McCarry if they shift him back uh, to center, but I think it's going to be Tristan Colon Castillo in the meantime. Um, other than that, we just got to wait and see what happens. We got to wait and see, but guys are getting healthy again. I mean, some guys have been out, but some guys coming back. So anyway, that's that. Like I said, I'm sure I will see y'all later on again today uh, because, again, by tomorrow, tomorrow by 4 p.m. Eastern time, uh, the Ravens have to get rid of four. They have to make four more roster moves uh, to get players off of the active roster. So four more roster moves, again, as long as my math serves me correctly. So who that is going to be? I would think Trace McSorley would be one of them, um, but only time will tell. Team Keep It Clean, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. We are out.